In this last video for week four, we'll be combining all of our skills up to this point to build a sample project involving primitive shapes, changing colors, mouse and keyboard input, and loops. After completing this week, you should have the tools to create your own interactive sketch, allowing you to successfully complete the assignment for this week, an interactive sketch in processing. Okay, so here we are in processing, and we're once again going to be working on a sample interactive project, building an interactive sketch from scratch. And once again, we're going to be basing this on a project from the Generative Design textbook. That's P2003. Once again, this is the textbook I highly recommend for working with processing, and we're going to be borrowing some of the code from generativegestaltung.de, and you can follow the code yourself by visiting that website and downloading the code package. So the first thing that we're going to do is set up the instructions for how this is going to work. And we're going to put these instructions on a multi-comment line. And to create multi-line comments, you simply open the comments with a forward slash star and close them with a star forward slash. So a few things that we're going to be using. We're going to be using the mouse and we're going to be using the position of mouse X to control the length. We're going to be using the position of mouse Y to control the thickness and number of lines to be drawn. And then we're going to use drag to draw. Then for the keyboard input, we're going to be using keys 1 through 3 to change the stroke color and delete or backspace to erase the canvas and lastly S to save as a PNG. So what we're going to do is we're creating a canvas that will draw blank and as the mouse moves across the x-axis it will change the length of the lines to be drawn Y will change the thickness and number of lines to be drawn. And then if you drag, you'll see that things will be drawn multiple times on top of themselves. So let's get started setting up first the global variables. So first of all, I'm going to set the global variable to be the stroke color. So I, this is going to be a color variable called stroke color. And I'm going to fill this this is going to be the stroke default color. Next is our setup function. So here I'm going to type void setup and it returns nothing. I'm going to open and close my curly brackets. I'm going to set up the size of our canvas to be 720 by 720. And here I'm going to change our color mode to be set up as HSB. So I'm going to type color mode with the camel case there. And I'll type HSB, and then these are going to be the value for the maximum red, green, blue, and alpha channels. So I'm going to set these up as 360, 100, 100, 100. Close that off. I'm going to go ahead and say that we won't need any fill on any of our objects. So I'll call that here in the setup code. And then I'm going to set the background color to be... 360. And now we're in HSB mode, so let me show you what that looks like here. Okay, so that's going to complete our setup code. We're going to move down to our draw code now uh, to work on how the drawing will be handled on the canvas. So, one of the first things that we're going to do is we're going to set it up so that nothing is drawn unless the mouse is pressed. So, we're going to use that mouse pressed. Uh, function to test if the mouse has been pressed. So I can simply type if mouse pressed. And previously I had set this to equals equals true. But actually I can just say if mouse pressed and then close this off and processing will interpret that if the mouse is pressed equals true and then execute the code inside this block. So I'll make my curly brackets here and I'm going to write the code. So first thing I want to write is a push matrix. And if you recall, this is going to push the current matrix onto a new stack. And this will allow us to modify things on the canvas and then replace them once we pop the matrix back. 
So I'll do a push matrix to set up a new matrix. And then I'm going to do a translate function. And this is going to translate the current origin of the matrix and replace it so it's at the exact center of the screen. And to find the center of the screen, you simply type width divided by 2 and height divided by 2. Great. Next, we're going to create a few new local variables. And those variables are going to store the resolution of our circle and the radius and angle of how the circle should be drawn. So basically, we're using several lines and grouping them together to form a circle. And based off of the location of the mouse, the circle will have less lines or more lines in it. So to do that, we're going to create this integer called circle resolution. And we're going to define it to return an integer based off of a mapping of a new value. So before I write this code, I want to explain how the map function works. So map takes five arguments. And those arguments are the value to be mapped, the lowest value of that value to be mapped, the highest value of the value to be mapped, and then your new mapping. And that is the low and the high there. So basically what we want to do is we want to rewrap the mouse and put it into a new limit somewhere between 2 and 10. This will limit the number of sides we have to be somewhere between 2 and 10 sides. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to type map and we're going to remap the value of mouse y plus 100. So this is going to give us the ability to make sure our circle is at least 100. The low value for that is 0. The high value for that is height. The new low value is 2. The new high value is 10. OK. Next, we're going to create a new integer for the radius of the circle. And that's going to be mouse x minus width divided by 2. This is simply going to make sure that the x, the mouse x location chooses the radius. And you're going to subtract width divided by 2 to make sure that it isn't any larger than the current area of the canvas. And next, we're going to do float angle. So this is how uh, the circle is going. So this is how the angle of the circle you're going to be drawing is oriented. And that's going to be based off of the built-in max radians of any circle, which is 2 pi. And then divide that by the circle resolution. OK. So next, we need to put a little bit of style into how these shapes are going to be drawn. So I'm just going to change the stroke weight. And we're going to set that to be 2. And then the stroke is going to be selected from that parameter that we made the global function stroke color. OK. Now we'll take a short break to see how things are going with a brief quiz. So next, I'm going to work on making the polygon from the information gathered from the mouse. So as you recall, making a polygon is a multi-line process. It begins by typing begin shape, and then it ends with end shape. So I'm just going to put those in to make sure that I open and close my polygon correctly. So after the begin shape code, I'm actually going to write a for loop. And what this is going to do is create a new integer called i. And that's going to be our integer for holding the count. And then it's going to test i. And if i is less than or equal to the circle resolution, then we're going to step or iterate through i simply by adding 1 to i. And then the code inside here is going to look something like this. So it's going to say, for everything, every time that this is true, create a new float called x. Set it up to be 0 plus, and now this is going to be a little bit of math functions here, 0 plus the cosine of angle times i. And then multiply that times the radius. And then we're going to do that again with the y value. So that's going to be float y equals 0 plus, and this time we're going to be sine. This will be angle times i times radius. Great. 
and then what we're going to do is use the vertex x comma y there we go so basically what this is doing is it's reading through i and as i counts it's going to step through i and every time i increases that's going to increase the cosine or sine of the angle times i and the radius then it's going to place the x and y values that that function is being stored in and it's going to use that to put a vertex on the shape so this is going to decide how many polygons are how many lines are on the polygon it's going to draw it step through that and then it's going to end the shape and then way down here after our end shape code I'm going to make sure that I pop the matrix back so this is popping the matrix back because basically we're putting this on a new plane and then we are um, using the pop matrix to restore that and I'll show you how I'm actually going to use that with the keyboard but now that we've got this drawing set up most of the way let's see if this builds see if we have any errors in our code and I'll show you what we're working with okay so we, we've received a weird error and if you've been following along closely you might have guessed what we did well what we did is we used the draw comment but we forgot to put the whole thing inside of the draw code so this is actually a really common mistake to make, which is why I wanted to point it out. So we're going to say void draw, no arguments, open curly bracket, and then way down here at the very end, we'll close that curly bracket there. Let's give this another try. OK, so we have our matrix here. And what you're going to see is that if I click, it's going to draw a shape. And based off of where I click, it, the shape is going to change the amount of sides that it has. So we have three sides, four sides, five sides, six sides, seven, eight, nine, and should be ten for the maximum. And then we change the size based off of where our mouse is. And then if we hold, it's going to increase that stroke. And if we click and drag, it's going to drag several instances of what we have there. So this is actually really, really, really cool. So what I want to do is I want to go back and I want to finish this code by adding a little bit of keyboard input. So this is going to give us a little bit more functionality here. And it's actually going to allow us to change that stroke color as well. So I'm going to type void key released. And that's not going to take any arguments, but it will contain uh, quite a bit of code here. So one of the first things that I want to do is I want to say that if the delete or backspace key is pressed, that the background, which is on a different matrix, uh, is reset to be the color white. And so I'm going to do that by saying if key is equal to delete or key is equal to backspace, simply write the background to be white, which since we're using HSB, it's going to be 360. And then what I also want to do is bring back that code that allows us to save a screenshot. So I'll say if key is equal to S and or key is equal to capital S, then save frame as screenshot dot PNG. And this is just going to place that screenshot right inside our folder and at this point I'm actually going to save to the desktop so that we make sure that that works so I'll save this to the desktop great okay so we have our delete key which will erase your drawing you have your S key which will save a copy of your drawing and then I want to introduce something new called switch and what switch does is it works like an if else structure but switch is more convenient when you need to select between three or more alternatives so let me show you how you can work with that. So I'm going to use switch. So I'm going to type switch down here. And the argument that it's going to take is a key. So it's going to be looking for different keys on the keyboard. And then I'll open and close my curly brackets. And then we'll put the cases that it's looking for here. So the way this works is that case. So this is what are you looking for? And I'll say one. And then a colon, not a semicolon. And then I'm going to type that it's going to redefine that global variable of stroke color 
to be color 0 and 10 and these are HSB values and then I'll type break with a semicolon not a colon so I need to just repeat this two more times for our next two colors so that is going to be simply going to copy and paste this actually to speed things along so if I paste and paste again I'll change this to case 2 change this to case 3 this one is going to be a different HSB value I'm gonna pick this this is a pre-selected color and once again these are HSB values okay and for case 3 I have a different color here we go okay this looks great so basically what this is going to do is it's going to allow us to press one two or three on our keyboard and the stroke color will change from black to a different colors so let's see how that works and then let's also test our delete or backspace key and our s key and let's take a look at what we have okay so once again if you draw in the upper right and you move down it's slowly adding shapes to your polygon okay so now if I click and hold you'll see that the stroke now is black so now I'm gonna press the number two and I'm gonna click and hold and you'll see now that the stroke is blue and I'm gonna hit the number three and you'll see now that the stroke is yellow so what I can do is paint with these colors using the different strokes and drag functions here and make really interesting pieces of art and the last thing that I want to test is the backspace or delete so I'm gonna press delete on my keyboard excellent that worked I'll make a new sketch very briefly and I'm gonna press backspace and that also works okay so one last thing and that is to save this drawing so let me just make a quick sketch here very nice okay so now if I press the S key it should have saved a copy of that to my folder and let's make sure that it did excellent excellent very nice so this is another very very interesting interactive and simple to code sketch now what I've done is I've showed you how to set up a brand new project interacting with the mouse and keyboard from scratch first we wrote our instructions we defined our global variables we set up and changed our color mode we set up the draw to only work when the mouse is pressed and what it did is it's using the location of the X and Y values of the mouse to draw a new polygon based off of the several different values and to put that polygon in the shape of a circle it exists on its own matrix so that when we press the delete or backspace key it overrides the background when we press the S key it saves a screenshot and we can change our stroke color that global variable by using the switch function to select between keyboard input one two or three so this concludes our videos and lectures for week four now that we've gone over this you have enough information to complete the week three project